Hello, Ron Mithril here once again, getting back to Mega Man Battle Network 3. So before we actually progress with my main game, I'm here on my white game, caught up to fight with Serenade again. Reason being, I've been told the more legitimate way to fight her, so I want to try and show that. Okay, basically for starters, what you want to do is start opening your folder a bit. You want to have some better attacks ready for when you can actually counter her. Let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of one of those. Essentially, you need to wait for Serenade to perform a specific attack. It's one I actually forgot she even had. You have to keep dealing with the kind of satellite attack there, so there is that. Okay, that'll fully open my folder. Let's see here. This should work fairly well. I just have to wait for her to perform the right attack. You can't mistake when it happens, but it does seem to take her a while to actually use it. There we go. As soon as that wave comes out, she cannot counter you. So, use that time to get in some attacks. You actually stun her for a while as she's doing it, too, so... You can at least get in a few counter-attacks that way. Okay, she's back to normal now, so I can't actually hit her. It kind of becomes a battle of attrition this way. I don't want to waste the life sword, so I'm going to have to wait for her to do that again. Stunning attacks like Flash Man definitely help in this fight. They make her vulnerable a bit longer, and let you layer on the counter hits. Okay, yeah, I got hit myself there. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, going to do that again, actually, starting with Flash Man. Because I think if I smack her with Flash Man and then use that last, uh, bar sword I have in my folder, I might be able to take her down with that. Just have to wait for her to use the proper attack again. I'm not sure if there's a specific trigger or if it's just that there has to be a number of those satellites that goes through. Okay. Nope, not quite enough. Because, yeah, even though she's weak enough now to where a single hit with Metal Man would take her out, unless she's using that counter attack, she'll just reflect him. She's that strong. Time freezing means nothing to her. Come on, use your attack. You know you want to. Ow. There we go. So that apparently is how you're really supposed to fight Serenade. It does seem an interesting method, though kind of weird that you can so easily break her just by area locking her. But, at least now it's been displayed. So anyway, back to the main game. So, back to blue version. It's time to make those bug frags work for us. Yeah, all 9,999 of them. <clears throat> yeah, I freely admit I used a hacking code for this, but it's interesting to see that that's the max you can hold. For the number of bug frags I needed for these purposes, uh, I honestly did not feel like fighting Gutsman over a hundred times. I did so back on the actual cartridge when I was playing this just for my own leisure, and yeah, I'd rather not go through that again. I didn't have any extra chips or extra style changes I needed to earn, so it felt best to just go ahead and be done with it. So let's go feed some viruses.
Eating viruses actually serves two purposes. First off, it strengthens that particular virus when you use their summon chip. The more you feed a particular virus, the stronger it'll be when it comes up from the selection roulette when you use one of those chips. For instance, since I'm feeding Metar 1 here, if that comes up from the summon chip, it'll be stronger. You can feed a virus family up to 100 bug frags. Unfortunately, you can only feed them 5 at a time. Why they didn't just give you an option of how much do you want to feed this virus family, I'll never know. Now once you've fed a family, you can redistribute the bug frags however you want by talking to the program in charge. So it becomes a strategy thing. Do you want to dump them all on the strongest version of the virus in the hopes of it coming up from the roulette for a stronger attack? Or do you want to evenly distribute them so any attack will be at least decent? It looks like that was all the food these viruses want. Let's go and try feeding a different type. Now the second purpose comes from talking to the program in charge, though this only happens if you have the yellow star for having defeated Alpha. Congratulations! Thanks to you, the Metar viruses have fully grown. No more bug frags are needed here. You can use them elsewhere. Hmm? The Metar viruses have a message. Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. The Metar viruses want you to meet their boss. You can find him on a black board. You'd do well to become his friend. Go on, you can do it. So, yeah. Bear in mind you only get to read those clues once, so pay attention. Fortunately, that one was a fairly easy one. The blackboard in question is at the ACDC school, and in fact is the only one that you can jack into there. So, back to our very own classroom. Now, just because you can tell where the clue leads doesn't mean you'll immediately find it. You do still need to scout the area to find where the virus is actually hiding. Here in the blackboard, it's down in the corner. Behold Metar Omega. Yeah, I'm also using a different chip folder to try and get some program advances done. So, we can easily delay until the chips I want come up. And it looks like I'll be getting Element Sword. Okay, Fire, Aqua, Illek, Bamboo Swords, and that gives us Element Sword. Now, don't get too excited. It's not the same as the Var Sword combo. It's basically just using all of the Elemental Swords in succession. Let's see here. Oh, you just couldn't be the, uh, the other yo-yo too, could you? Oh well. Let's just wrap this one up. Ow. Yeah, they can be fairly quick with those shockwaves. The virus you deleted is coming back. Is this what the guy at Scilab meant by cleaning a virus? Well, you'd think you'd know by now. So let's get back to the virus breeder and look around. Back to Scilab with us. Unfortunately, a lot of the program advances I still have to do involve Mega Class chips, so... Yeah, even though I performed that particular advance, there's nothing I can really replace it with. Yeah. Oh well. And now, there are four viruses in here. They're staring blankly ahead. What could they be thinking? Are they even thinking? So as I was saying, by talking to the program in uh, charge here, you can redistribute the viruses, uh, bug frags, however you want. Now, an interesting thing of note here. There is actually a way to make use of the way the system works. From what I've heard, if you dump all the bug frags onto the weakest form of the virus, thus powering it up to its maximum attack power, well, 
Then, if you just let the selection roulette run out, it'll automatically select the weakest virus. Now, I'm not sure if that's affected at all by getting the Omega form of the virus. I don't know if it's just timing based on how many viruses are in the family, or if it's just, you took too long, so here's the weakest form of the virus, better luck next time. Either way, it's a valid strategy. So, with that, it's time to go take care of the rest of the Omega viruses. So, back when I finish feeding the next one. One more set of bug frags. Bunny is jumping up and down excitedly. And that's all for the bunnies. So then. The bunny viruses have a message. They want you to meet their boss. He's a sleepyhead. You can find him in a sleeping place. A sleeping place is a bit of a tricky one to think about. It might make you think of the Yoka Inn, it might make you think of your friend's bedrooms, but that's not the bed in question. They directly want a bed that you can jack into, and there's only one of those. No place more restful than a hospital? Yeah, right. So here in the hospital bed, we can find what we're after. And that's bunnies. Time to bag us a bunny. Let's see if we can get a good advance here. Uh, yeah, of course, unfortunately, the problem with this folder is it doesn't flow the best exactly. Ouch. Bad bunnies. Okay. Open up the folder as much as we can to try and get some of the chips we need. We've already done the element sword. Okay, there's one. Rat on one, rat on two, rat on three. And we get... Hyper Rat! Not only hits one target, but it did its purpose there. H, I, J of Yo-Yo 2, and we get Zeta Yo-Yo 2. Now that'll help a little bit more in this situation, thanks to the invisibility effect. Let's see here. Yeah, let's just go ahead and wrap this one up. And we've bagged us a bunny. So that's two down. Back with the next one. A few more bug frags. That's right, Spiky, you wag that slight bit of a tail you've got. And that's it. It's spiky time. The spiky have a boss, and they want to introduce him to you. They say he hates the zoo, so he's always causing trouble near there. Yes, it's back to the zoo. And this is a bit of an irritating clue, because it really doesn't give you much else to go on aside from that. There are a lot of places at the zoo that you can jack into, and it doesn't really give you much of a hint as to where you need to. Thank goodness for game facts. You actually have to get into the zoo network. The one where you fought Beastman originally. The one that they like to keep making you come back to. Specifically, the spiky Omega virus is at a dead end in zoo network area too. So, off we go to find it.